versus WKU. Uh, WKU up now 3-0, confidently going into the second half. Jazzy, did you uh, did you hear anything from them down there? Get to talk to them at all down there at all? Or are you staying up here just chilling? Yeah, I stayed up here, but uh, you know, I, I think the team realizes they're on the right track right now. So uh, my guess is we'll see them uh, throttle down a little bit in the second half, kind of save themselves for that final game against DePaul, kind of coast on this lead. But I think they realize now the virtue in playing a more aggressive style. I mean, and that's where you go, coaches, why, why are you not doing this every game no matter who your opponent is? This should be something that happens no matter what, who you are playing. You can't be scared of the ball. I don't care who Saginaw Valley is. Wait. All right. And away we go, second half. That was uh, Bosco, number eight, getting out uh, number 37. Number eight, Bosco, getting out number 37, Vic Purnell for WKU off the opening rush. That opening rush really seems like a boom or bust type of thing. You're going to get the ball, and you're probably going to see two or three people out um, from a team, maybe maybe only one from the other team. But it is, it's a it's a very interesting new opening rush. I I don't know. I'm not sure if I like it yet, Jazzy. I mean, what do you think about this opening rush? I think bottom line, it's safer, and that's really what matters because we were seeing a lot of blown out knees, broken fingers, uh, going with the old opening rush. Nostalgia, I loved it. I thought it was great, but I understand it's safer. And uh, when you get right down to it, that's what matters. we got to make a safer product. Now, what do you think if we made, if, if the balls on this, on the side, the, the closest ones to you were not live and the middle ones were, would that make, I don't know, I think that would make that a little bit more interesting, a little bit of combination of the old Russian and the, and, and the new one. The thing for me is I feel like it's really tough for these refs to call these close quarter type of uh, throws because... Things happen so quickly. There's no distance for the ball to travel, so you have to know right away if you've got an out or not. So it's more more strain on the refs. So I think I think that'd be a nice uh, kind of middle ground to tread. Well, and then you only have four balls that are live off the start, and you I mean you don't have the aggression that you should. Like right now, there's just so much aggression because all six of the balls on each side are live. Those four in the middle are also live, but you don't have them immediately. So you have to kind of jockey for them. And if you had to go back or the ball had to be cleared from the back line, I think that would be an interesting little strategic thing because then you could go for the middle one, but it doesn't matter. That was uh, Tor, Tor, Toreo Ota, 43 for VCU, uh, with a nice catch there. Nice little throw from number nine, WKU. He's, uh, he's ramped it up these last two games here. Yeah, Ota's got him a nice little arm on him. Nice foot shot there. And, uh, yeah, Mark, Mark Antos, I believe. An Antos. Is, yeah, the 69 is their really good thrower. That was uh, number 13, uh, Nick Taylor, that went out and shot to the foot there just a minute ago for VCU. So a grueling long day for this round robin, Jazzy. Like, this is what eight or nine hours of dodgeball in a row for a uh, 16 teams playing. I mean, is there a, a specific way to like prevent you from from crashing and and burning for the second for the second day? Like, I, I just remember my arm. I had to ice it after every single game. I think. Obviously, you try to rest your players, get rest for all your guys. Like we said, kind of throttle down in the second half of games that you know you have in hand. And it's a, it's a, it's a grind. I mean, you, you find out who the Warriors are on day two. And the thing is, like, you want, like, those tough games, like Saginaw Valley, you want to play your hardest because you want to show people that, hey, you, and you want to get a good posi position for the tournament the next day. So you have to play your hardest sometime during the first day, and this is where we're seeing WKU just kind of go, okay, 3-0 right now. We just don't. I would actually give the ball to some of my lesser throwers right now and, and save, my, save number 44's arm for tomorrow. I would let him be like, hey, you're blocking now. I want you being a blocker. I want you to work on catching. And I'm not seeing that from WKU because I think they really want this victory yeah. and they really want that confidence. And I mean, DePaul's going to be – that's not a that's not a cakewalk of a game for WKU it's next. It's not a pushover. DePaul actually beat WKU earlier this year. So 
Yeah, WKU's got to save themselves, and uh, this is where I think WKU will have a little bit of an advantage over a more offensive team is they rely so heavily on catching that they will be a little fresher. And when those arms are really, really sore and those fingers are hurting and cramping, guess what? Catching will still be just as efficient for a team like WKU tomorrow. So that's where you do see their style of play have an advantage. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, man, I would uh... – my fingers would be bleeding by day two just because of the amount of pressure that you're putting on uh, the, the, with the grippy throw and the friction that that causes. Mm, not fun. Alex over here being our cameraman, doing a great job, I might add. What are you, uh, how are you feeling uh, about this game, man? Uh, I don't know. Western's actually not doing as good as I would have thought. There for a minute, it looked like they were going to end up on the bad side of a player swing. Uh, but I agree. I think Jazzy was right. It looks like they are kind of winding down a little bit. Uh, they're still doing some pushes here, but you see they're not running back to the midline. So I think this is a comfortable strategy for them. Again, their day is not even halfway over. They've got 20 minutes left in this half and then two full games. Uh, maybe, Jazzy, could you give us your thoughts on the next two games for Western? Because I'm not – I know they're playing DePaul and – oh, that's it? Never mind, that's it. All right, this is their third game. I'm dumb. Um, I was going to mention something. Number 15 in the middle. Uh, I know you guys, it's kind of hard to read their numbers on there, but right in the middle, he's dead center. That guy right there. He was doing something really cool, and I don't see – Andrew Fisher, he's not. He's doing something very cool that he's not doing now because he has a ball. But if you put your hand behind your back, even without a ball, you force the opponent to think that you might – have one. And if you can convince all of your team, if you get them practiced enough to where every single person has a hand behind their back at all times, and you never know who has one of your five, six, seven, eight balls at a time, it can really throw the opposition off, and it can make you do some pump fakes, and you can jockey for balls when you don't even have one in your hand. So it really gets you good position, maybe more ball control and intimidation factor, because anybody on your team can have a ball, and it's I, I was seeing number 15 do that for a second, and he's, he's kind of stopped that now, but it's a really cool little strategy that you can do if you're playing some dodgeball at home with your kids or something. Yeah, even if you don't have a ball, you can definitely make people believe that you do, and it's that hesitation, that second of doubt that will allow you to save your teammate from being hit, will allow you to get a loose ball on the court. I've said this before in another broadcast, that Brett Rice is one of my favorite players ever for WKU. Call him the honey badger. Because he just didn't give a you-know-what. If a ball was up near midcourt, he was going to pump fake and basically uh, get that ball no matter what the other team was wanting to do. So I always admired Brett for that kind of tenacity and courageousness to go up there and say, I'm getting this ball, and over my dead body, are you taking it? Adam Martin did the same thing, man. He, he did not care one bit. About. Yeah, I think Adam Martin was born without any kind of fear. <laughs> you know, it's really fun. I get to play dodgeball every once in a while, a while with my students. I'm a middle school teacher, and I get to do the exact same thing because they know I can throw the ball. And we're playing with little foam things, so it's not, it's not this type of dodgeball. But as soon as I put my hand behind my back, they always have to guess whether I have a ball or not. And it's, it's, that, it, it's, it's, it's a fear. Right. And you keep them guessing, and the opposition will will get trumped. You will sometimes you will have a ball, and then you get them out because they're like, no, you don't. It's that bluff game like poker. It it yeah. makes things much more difficult for you to like. If you pretend to be weak, they're gonna think you're weak, and they're gonna capitalize on it. If you pretend to be strong like that, they're gonna they're gonna be worried. Yep. Alex, do you think they're gonna finish this game strong? I mean, they're they're looking like we're doing some acrobats here with number <laughs> number eighteen, but. We're on the Italian Stallion court. That was a jump Felix Peroni himself would have been proud of. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, you say finish strong. I definitely, I think that this is a definite win for us. Um, it, it's just, I, 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 would, I would be cautious. I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, want, I don't want to see them play aggressively right now. Um, their next game against DePaul is going to be a big one for them. Um, so there's no sense in wearing themselves out. This is a good time. I notice... Uh, you were talking about number 15 earlier. I noticed when he was still on the court, he was almost always giving up a ball and working on his catching, working on his moving. That's what everyone should be doing. Work on the things that will be really important in that DePaul game. Don't wear yourself out making these big cannon throws trying to win a game that's already won. So. And uh, we're joined in the booth again by Andrew, the survivor, Swanson. Swanee, <laughs> give us your thoughts so far on WKU versus VCU. Very quickly. Pretty good. He has from, uh, a two-word vocabulary from Swanson. Very good. <laughs> Ooh, 
Did that hit him? Number three, did that, did that hit? Okay, all right, hit the ball. All right. All right, so they have in three and four, Jason Wong and Hunter Ford. And uh, even though uh, Hunter's jersey has an H in front of Ford, maybe that's for his first name? Maybe, maybe. Ooh, a catch seat. That's, the, that's where you're going to come across the, the problems with WKU throwing alone. You're going to get people that are going to get catches. And you can't afford those kind of swings at this late of the, uh, of the point. Now it's five on three. That's not nearly as bad of odds. Um, okay, no, I'm sorry. It's six on three. So WKU still has a 15-second shot clock, which is really, really nice for them. And they need to keep that as long as they possibly can. Doing a little switcheroo on us. Uh, I think Jazzy's going to go check out the uh, possibly the UK game, which is now looking like UK is winning at least this point. Is it 3-1? Okay, Grand Valley still with a commanding lead. I, it's unfortunate, but hey, you get one point on Grand Valley. Okay. So probably going to be a Grand Valley win, but that's a big thing. I mean. They pride themselves, I mean, they don't have to take pride in their wins, they're the reigning champions. They take pride in not giving up points. So giving up a point to a team that, to be honest, was not one of our competitors, or, you know, not one of our top-tiered teams today, that's, that's going to be a shot for them. But, I mean, I, I think they, they, they do a good job of kind of keeping their players in a positive headspace. So I don't think they're going to take... You know, losing one point like that, I don't think it's going to be a ruiner for them. But it does kind of indicate how close the competition is today, I think. You know, I remember you know, roughly 2010 when we went to Grand Valley for Nationals. Did they lose a single point the entire year? And I'm not talking about the tournament. I'm not talking about during the season. I mean the entire year. Out. All right, we got uh, – actually, I do not remember. I was not I at that so. Is that the one at BGSU? Oh, was it the BGSU one? We went to Grand Valley, didn't we? Oh, okay. Okay. Did they not? They didn't lose a single point. Whew. They were down. They. <laughs> oh. I think it, the competition is definitely um, leveled out a little bit, and I don't know if that means Grand Valley is worse. Which I kind of, I, I'm not sure. I think they have less arms, but I don't think they're as uh, as scary. But the depth of the league is improving. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of. I'm having a conversation with one, and he, you can't even hear him. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to give both answers at the same time. We got Ford, the last man standing for VCU. Yeah, this is. You see his his skill at dodging. I've had the camera on him, but I want everyone to notice. Look at where the Hilltoppers are. Look at where the Hilltoppers are on the court right now. They're pressing up on that front line, which is something where even in previous, you know, points and games. Even when they've got the man advantage, even when they have the ball advantage, they just never want to be, uh-oh. Oh, he's calling for blood there. Uh, they never seem to want to be up on that front line. So VCU has to make a throw every 10 seconds. It's going to really wear him out. He's not going to make very strong throws. What he's most likely going to do is he's going to try to throw it over the heads of WKU players or right at their feet so they can't catch it. And unfortunately for us, we have WKU players throwing solo which is not something that you want to see. And there was just a catch made. Yes, Mr. Ford did, in fact, make a catch, and it's now two VCU players versus six WKU. Again, still a 10-second shot clock, so that's always nice. We have a timeout for WKU, who uh, I think they're getting a little tired. Oh, yeah, we were following you. Yeah, Mr. Ford, well played, sir. Mr. Hufford. Hufford. With the H just randomly there. Probably shouldn't, me and you probably shouldn't be making fun of other people's last names. <laughs> With Heichelbeck and Subcheck as our last name. Oh, my goodness. First days of school is always fun for us, isn't it? it a miserable, miserable experience. <laughs> and then we became teachers. And then we became well, teachers. Well, That's just the dumbest thing ever. Um, so, let's see. Sitting on 1243 still to play. Um, again, the, the smart money here because after this game, uh, both teams are going to have about 60 minutes, give or take, to kind of rest. So you definitely want to be doing everything you can to save energy here. Uh, obviously, one thing that we don't do, we don't let, you know, with 14 minutes left, we were, both teams are, I don't believe they're allowed to just be like, yeah, we're just going to call it here. 
Um, they've got um, to no. put some effort in for regulation. I think if it's under 10, they kind of the, the judges or the, the referees kind of decide we're going to have a running clock, and then if it's under 5, they kind of go, you know, why? It's actually, it risks injury more if you play the point that you know it won't matter. Like, people start getting really crazy in the last three minutes because they just want to throw the ball. And it can, I've seen, the, the only injury that I saw live was someone when they were playing the last few minutes of the, of the point and just going all out. And it was just dangerous. All right, so for VCU, we've got number four, Fort, who we know is a survivor. He's the one that's kind of kept this game going. And uh, Zero, who I, I know is one of the strong throwers. So there is still a game here. Um, we have an interesting. We had a substitution on WKU's side. 64. Um, Mr. Big Bird is uh, is back into the game. He's. The rule is if you have someone not within your starting 15, so not in the 15 um, original players, you can sub them in off of your bench for a player that's in. So that is which we we have seen occur. Swan, uh, Big Bird is definitely one of our stronger throwers. Wow! What a nice that was play. A clutch. Like throwing in a very quick catch after that. That was nice. Yeah. Court awareness. Court awareness. Oh, look oh, at this wow. counter, but it doesn't even matter because Mr. 88. All right, so with 11 minutes.